Hi, I'm Judy LaRiviere, and I am an assistive technology specialist and occupational therapist. I have developed this recorded webinar, Communicating and Connecting While Staying at Home, especially for families, on behalf of UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals, Katie's Clinic for Rett Syndrome and Related Disorders, and at the request of rettsyndrome.org. In this webinar, I will show you how to support your loved one with Rett Syndrome in their communication with some fun family activities. I will also share with you some of the wonderful resources that companies specializing in augmentative communication and literacy learning are providing free access to through June 2020. Companies are doing this to help families support and teach their children with complex communication needs, including those with Rett syndrome while staying at home. I know that I have been receiving and continue to receive emails on a regular basis from these companies. So in this recorded webinar, I am going to help you sort through these extensive offerings and give you an inside look at a few of the options which support language and literacy while integrating best practices from evidence-based research. I am also going to share activity ideas, which I hope you can easily do at home to support communication and engagement of your loved one with Rett syndrome with brothers and or sisters, as well as other family members. Based on the experiences shared by experts and caregivers worldwide in the development and publishing of the Rett syndrome communication guidelines, and as I know, from experiences working with individuals with Rett syndrome and related disorders in clinic and in my private practice. All too often, too many individuals worldwide have limited support in regular times. So I hope these resources will prove helpful for families and caregivers for the long term as well. Given I know that everyone's time is stretched beyond compare in these unprecedented times, I have developed an index to this recorded webinar with timestamps so that you can jump to specific locations to view the resources and information I share about topics or resources about which you are interested in learning more. This index is included in the PDF files you can download before viewing this webinar. Of course, you are more than welcome to watch this webinar from start to finish, but I also want to respect the time pressures in which families are under these days. I would also like to express my deepest gratitude to the girls with Rett syndrome and their parents for their generous support in providing me with incredible videos of their daughters communicating and participating in activities from home so that I can share these with you. My hope is that these amazing videos will inspire you and show you how you can naturally engage your child, teen, or young adult in some activities which support communication and learning while staying safe and healthy at home. I also want to say that I would like everyone to watch the last section of this recorded webinar on shared reading, as there's a new resource you can start using right away. Plus, you won't want to miss the last video in this recorded webinar. With all that being said, let's get started. So I know there's been all this talk about social distancing, and whenever you hear that, I want you to be thinking of physical spacing, not social distancing. We are all social by nature. Our social connections with one another are what bring us love, joy, and laughter. During these times, we do have the opportunity to deepen our connections with our family members and spend quality time with them. Everyone's home. We're all in this together. This is a really unique opportunity for siblings to spend time with their sister or brother with Rett syndrome. They're home. They're not going to their games. Everyone can have sit-down meals because no one's running off to this school function or team sports or anything like that. Plus, there's not the extra homework at night. They can get it done during the day. So this is also an opportunity to engage in activities at home through which communication happens naturally. Now that we are all under stay-at-home orders, everything is conducted remotely. And I'm here to tell you that remote sessions with your child's therapist from school can be very effective. I started doing weekly therapy remote sessions last fall through my private practice, Assistive Tech for All Incorporated. Prior to this, I had used remote sessions to connect with girls across North America 
with whom I had previously worked directly, so I knew them already. However, last fall, I had the incredible opportunity to work remotely with children and families who received therapy services through an amazing and forward-thinking center, High Hopes Pediatric Therapy Center in Dubai. I only met these children virtually through their remote sessions, but I worked with them during their speech therapy sessions with typically their mom and speech therapist in attendance. I've included the website for High Hope Center below in case you want to look at this center in more depth. It is essentially a one-stop therapy center for children and their families given speech and language therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, sensory integrative therapy, vision therapy, along with hydrotherapy are available all in one place. It's truly an amazing center. So one girl with whom I worked was a 21-month-old girl with Rett syndrome. When I started working with Nina and her mom last fall, the goal was to identify the best eye gaze system for her. We conducted eye gaze trials with different eye gaze systems and communication-based software, while also continuing to develop her communication skills during our collaborative speech therapy sessions. The sessions were set up so that I connected to the AAC device remotely through a software program called TeamViewer, and then we video conferenced by phone for the entire session. Through TeamViewer, I was able to guide Nina's speech therapist at High Hope Center in positioning Nina's eyes in the track status window. I controlled the initial calibration, setting the dwell and the feedback features, and then I would load different pages on the communication device and conducted the session essentially as if I was physically in the room touching the device. Nina's mom and her speech therapist would be essentially my hands and engage in various activities with Nina. Throughout this process, we determined that the best fit for Nina was the Toby Dynavox PCI Mini with Windows Control, the iMobile Mini Bracket, all connected to a Microsoft Surface Pro tablet. We selected Rehadapt's tabletop TS XL mount, so you will see all of these items within her videos from home. Nina's mom sent me this first video about one week after Nina was set up with her new Toby Dynavox eye gaze system and was using it at home. Nina is talking and playing with her older brother while her mom is videoing and naturally acknowledging what Nina is selecting and giving it meaning by responding to Nina's voice. Nina's mom is also teaching her son how to respond to what his little sister is saying with her voice. Nina is using Smart Boxes Grid 3 communication software. She is using Grid 3's SuperCore learning pages. Within SuperCore learning, there are actually two different sizes available, 12 cell and 20 cell. Nina is using the 20 location or 20 cell play-based pages. She loves the pages for bubbles and reading. And in the video I will be showing you, she's using the page for trains. This is a screenshot of Grid 3's 20 cells or 20 location super core learning page, which focuses on playing with trains. As you can see, there are pronouns on this page along with verbs and specific nouns related to the actual play-based activity as well as adjectives. So there's a combination of words that can be used together to direct a play activity. In this video, you will see Nina using her Toby Dynavox communication device with her eyes to direct her brother in playing with a wooden train set that's set up on her tray. In the video, what I've done too is highlighted the words that Nina selects from the train page on her device, just in case you might not be able to hear it. Len, let her please just see the screen. Yeah, Nina, good girl. Are we playing with trains with your brother and tracks? Trains and tracks? What do you think, Nina? Now just move back a little bit so she could say something. Driver. driver. Is there a driver on that train? Hey. It, it, it is a train. Build. Leon, can you build something for her? Here, look. Let's build something. Nina, you told us to build, so look, we're building. We're going to build something next to the train. Build a bridge. Build a bridge? A train? Okay, we have a train.
Oh, Nina, we're going to have to improvise on that one. We don't have a bridge. I'm sorry, Nina. We don't have that bridge. We don't have that bridge, no. But, hmm. What? I saw you on beep. Uh-huh. Wow. Let's move this out the way so she can talk. Oh, she just said crash. How do they crash? Look at that train crash, Nina. Crash. They crashed. Now they staked. Why? No. Like. You don't like that they crashed? I don't like that they crashed. They better drive safely, right? Huh, Nina? Bridge. Bridge. Nina wants a bridge. What are we? Bridge. Mama, look, it fell over. Oh no, it did fall. She liked that. Bridge. 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 Okay, Nina keeps we telling. Don't have that bridge. Okay, you know what? Let's improvise. Let's try to see if we can make a bridge like that. Look, Nina. We made you a bridge. Uh, we made a bridge. We made a bridge. Beep, beep. She said beep, beep. Hello, beep, beep, boo, boo. Beep, beep, boo, boo. Drive it, drive it, she said. Here, Nina, you want to take what? Hey. Let's take put one in Nina's hand. Knock down it. Whoop. Stop. 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 We have to stop. Okay, let's stop a bit. I'm going to show you another video of Nina having a conversation with her mom using her voice in conjunction with her other natural modes of communication, which include eye contact with her communication partner, and in this case, her mom, and smiling. Nina is using my copyrighted home page set in Grid3 software, which is designed to support spontaneous and natural back and forth conversations, given each button is programmed with a core phrase as compared to a single word. There are fewer buttons on these pages to support ease of access through the selection of a specific button to chat, share a comment, or express a need. These pages include Patty King DeBond's colorful and engaging age-respectful images that she developed through her company, creativecommunicating.com. On this slide, I am showing you screenshots of a couple of the buttons that Nina uses in the video from the chat and I need something pages. Previously, my homepage was only available for Communicator 5, but now I have also developed it for Grid3 software. I am also in the process of setting it up in Toby Dynavox's Snap Core first, as well as in the communication software used on PRC or Prenky Romic communication devices. Hi, honey. Do you have your Toby in front of you? Do you have your Toby in front of you? You want to tell me anything? Hmm? What do you want to talk about? Huh? I need something. Okay, what do you need? I need some help. You need some help? It really hurts. What really hurts, Nina? What really hurts? Can you tell me what hurts? Are you just joking with Mama or does something really hurt? Huh? Can you tell me what hurts? It's my throat. Your throat did hurt last week. That's true. Your throat did hurt last week. I'm not so sure it hurts anymore. Hmm? What else? Hi, Nina. I'm having a good day. I'm so happy you're having a good day. I have a good day when you have a good day. Yeah? Yeah? Because I love that nice smile. Nice talking with you. I love talking with you, too. Me, me. I love talking with you. Hi. Can you tell me something Back about yourself? Page. Can you go to maybe, should we go to, um, can we go, Nina, Nina, sorry. Can we go to about me? About me. Can you tell me stuff about yourself? Hmm? Nina, what are you going to tell me about yourself? Let's talk. Let's talk. You don't want to talk about yourself. You just went out of there. Okay. Hey, how's it going? Are you having a good day? Is Nina having a good day? Hi, smiley girl. I would like that. You would like that? You would like to have a good day? You are having a good day, I can tell. 
<laughs> Hi, Smiley. I need something. Okay, what do you need? Do you need a drink? What do you need? We're going to go have... I need to rest my eyes. Okay, you need to rest your eyes. We're going to rest your eyes really soon because it's going to be time to do some physio right now. Deal? Do we have a deal? I need to rest my eyes. You need to rest your eyes. Back to main page. Okay, back to main page. I'll tell you what I think. Back to main page. Okay. I want. Okay. What do you want, Nina? What do you want? I want to go outside. Okay, we'll make a deal. If we do a bit of physiotherapy now and a little Please, bit of exercise, we can go outside. Deal? I need something. Okay, what do you need? What do you need? Let's talk. Okay, let's talk. Are you having a good day? Nina, are you having a good day? Or you're not having such a good day? Hi! Hi, hi! hi. How's it going? I'm good. Thank you for asking. How are you? Are you having a good day or not such a good day? I would like that. You would like that. You would like to have a good day and you'd like to do some exercises with me? Yeah, can we go do some exercises? At this point in my recorded webinar, I want to let you know that the Rett Syndrome communication guidelines have been published and can be purchased from this website, rettsyndrome.org slash COVID-19 hyphen resources. If you live in the U.S., you can purchase a hard copy for $10. If you live outside the U.S., you can purchase a downloadable PDF copy for $10, the same price. To be honest, I couldn't wait to get my hard copy shipped, which can take up to four weeks during these times. So I purchased the downloadable PDF copy as well. And I was surprised that there was actually a discount for purchasing both. So I paid $15 total for both. Although I have not yet had a chance to sit down and start reading it from the beginning to end, I've had an opportunity to skim through it. I was immediately drawn to the beautiful photos of individuals with Rett syndrome who are communicating in so many different ways. They've really captured this in the photos. It's beautiful. The authors have also captured quotes from caregivers and experts in the field and highlighted best practices. So there is no longer a need to reinvent the wheel in terms of what works in supporting the communication and language development of individuals with Rett syndrome. There is no longer a need for teams working with individuals with Rett syndrome to question whether or not they have the potential to learn to read and write. The answer is a definitive yes, that it is their right to have access to the best evidence-based literacy instructional practices and to be engaged on a daily basis in activities which support them in their journey from emergent literacy learners to conventional readers and writers. The authors included the Literacy Bill of Rights that was originally published by Yoder, Erickson, and Copenhaver in 1997 in the Rett Syndrome Communication Guidelines as an affirmation of these rights. And these can be found on page 70 of the hard copy in the Rett Syndrome Communication Guidelines, or if you have the downloadable PDF, you can reference page 74 for these. I highly, highly recommend you get access to these Rett Syndrome Communication Guidelines. I consider them a must read for everyone and anyone who has had their heart touched by a child, teen, or adult with Rett Syndrome. To support you in using these communication guidelines, Dr. Jillian Townend and Dr. Teresa Bartolotta, they've recorded a Facebook Live presentation on March 30th, 2020, and you can access these at that same website. In this recorded Facebook Live presentation, they focused on Section 4, Strategies to Optimize Engagement from the Rett Syndrome Communication Guidelines. And if you actually go to the website that I highlighted, and that's also shown here, Section 4 is actually a free download. And when you go to this website, you will see where it says, get your free chapter. Dr. Jillian Townend and Dr. Teresa Bartolotta will also be doing some upcoming Facebook Live presentations focusing on communication intervention, which relates to Section 8 from the Rett Syndrome Communication Guidelines. 
And if you want more information about these presentations, you can go to rettsyndrome.org slash COVID-19 hyphen resources. Now, in terms of this recorded webinar, I would like to bring your attention to my sensory regulation chart, which I gave the authors permission to publish in the Rett Syndrome Communication Guidelines. It's on page 29 in the hard copy and on page 33 in the PDF. And the reason I want to reference this right now is to talk about how an individual sensory system needs to be in the green zone or in a regulated state so he or she is ready to communicate, participate, and learn. And essentially, they're engaged. What you will see is that their body is calm and relaxed. They are visually attending to the activity. They are using their natural gestures to interact with their communication partner. And you will see their true communication abilities and potential shine through. And this is whether they're using a communication device with eye gaze technology or eye gazing to choices of objects or picture communication symbols or participating in a literacy lesson. Just like you saw in the video with Nina and also in upcoming videos with tweens, you will see that they are engaged in communicating and demonstrating their true abilities. So at this point in this webinar, you may be wondering, how do I even get started with communication? Well, all you need is a yes response from your son or daughter, and you're ready to start communicating. Whenever I first start working with an individual with Rett syndrome, whether it's in Katie's clinic for Rett syndrome and related disorders, or in my own private practice, I look for all the different ways he or she uses natural gestures to tell me yes. And I always start by sitting on their left side. If they look at me, that's one of their natural yes responses. So you may be wondering why on the left side, why is that important? Well, if you're thinking about um, reading or when you're presenting even choices to your son or daughter through eye gaze, you always start with isolating or naming the choice that's on the left side and then moving to the right side. So a lot of things are presented in a left to right progression. So naturally, they're always going to be looking at that left side first, and then that's just easier, so it's more natural for them. Now, in some cases, and this is with definitely, I'll say, a few girls that I've worked with, they have some maybe physical limitation of turning to the left, or left is not their natural side that they look to, so then I would be sitting on the right side, and that would be their side for giving me a yes response. But that's only with a few girls out of the many that the many, many that I've seen and worked with. So that is not where I start. But if I, they're not responding to me or looking at me, and this happened recently during a clinic session with a very young girl who was two years old. And what I observed is that she wasn't looking to me when I was sitting on the left side. So I was asking her parents about it and they're like, oh, yeah, she has torticollis on that side of her neck. So it really interferes with, so she's tighter on that side of her neck. So what I ended up doing, I switched over to the right side and started talking to her while she was using an eye gaze system. And she naturally looked to me sitting on the right. And so that was her natural yes response. So I was telling her parents that, look, what you need to be doing is sitting on her right side. And then her no would end up being, you know, looking over to the left or um, looking straight ahead type thing. But or yes is definitely going to be on the right side. And that's the side you need to reinforce. The wonderful thing about yes responses is that they are portable and available anywhere and any time. Given the individual with Rett syndrome is initiating these natural gestures, they're much easier for them to give at any point in time and they're less affected by their apraxia because you're not asking them upon command, look to me, or you're not saying, Turn your head so you can tell me yes or tell me yes. You're, you're asking a natural yes or no question or using partner-assisted scanning. And I'll talk more about that later. But basically, it's much easier for them to give you that natural gesture. I always say that a picture is worth a thousand words. This photo is a clear example of a young girl communicating yes through her eye contact with me. I was working with her during her communication session at Katie's clinic for Rett syndrome and related disorders. She was using her Toby Dynavox communication device to direct me in reading a story to her about Olaf from the movie Frozen. 
This was one of her favorite movies. I was commenting about how Olaf was being so silly, being out in the sun and saying, doesn't he know he's a snowman and can melt? She immediately looked to me to agree that yes, Olaf was being so silly, sort of like, what was he thinking? Often references are made to an individual's best yes, but this implies that only one yes is acceptable. And in my experience, this is not the case. An individual has a variety of natural yes responses that he or she uses at any point in time. And it's really important that we are open and flexible in responding to what a child, teen, or adult with Rett syndrome can give us at any point. It's also equally important that all family members know how to recognize, acknowledge, and give meaning by responding to those natural yes responses. And what families have reported back to me after they recognize and see the natural yes gestures that their child is using, that it really opens the world of communication and they realize how much their son or daughter has been communicating all the time to them and they just haven't seen it. But once they see that, how they're using those natural gestures, it just opens up a whole world for them and it really reinforces the development of a child's communication abilities. So I always say that except always an individual communicates yes and no at any given time. Typically what happens, people are always concerned about yes and no, but typically the yes develops first and then you can start seeing the no by being looking away or just the absence of a yes response. On this slide, I've listed various examples of yes responses that I've seen over time I want you to recognize that this is not an exhaustive list or the only ways that individuals with Rett syndrome can communicate a yes response, but these are the ones that I've seen frequently over time. Now, one child is not going to show all of these. They may have a couple, two or three. This at least gives you an idea of what to be looking for. One of the most common examples of yes responses is eye contact with a communication partner or directing gaze towards a communication partner. And I refer you back to the video of Nina while she was having a conversation with her mom. She was not looking directly at her mom, but you could see her eyes shift to the right where her mom was actually positioned in videoing. Another example of a natural yes response is an eyebrow raise. And this one's really effective given you can be looking directly at the individual with Rett syndrome and they can indicate with an eyebrow raise or they... If they're having a harder day, motor-wise, they might not be feeling well, this one seems to be really easy for them to still give versus turning their head and looking to someone um, or having eye contact with someone. Other times I've seen a natural head nod. This is not always consistently used, but when they're in a good zone, um, motor-wise and in terms of their sensory system, I've seen them nod their head yes. I've also seen smiles, vocalizations, Sometimes a gross swipe at something or even touching their communication partner. That can be another form of a yes response. And what's really important to recognize is that each individual will have their own unique ways of communicating yes. Okay. And these can change over time. One girl I work with actually that you're going to see a video of very shortly, Lilia, she now has an eye blink as one of her natural yes responses. And she didn't have this a couple of years ago. We started seeing it and then we started reinforcing it and acknowledging it as one of her yes responses. And now it's one of her most consistent ones that she uses. So this next video I'm going to show you is of a teenager, Lilia, who is using a variety of yes responses while engaging with myself and her AAC specialist. You're going to see how our acknowledgement of her variety of yes responses supports an ongoing interaction and engagement, even without her using her communication device. And her communication device is right there and set up for her. But the thing is, she's actually engaging in a conversation just using natural gestures. So the background information to this video is that Lilia loves to bake. And on the way to the conference room where she was going to work with myself and her AAC specialist, she overheard a conversation I was having with the school's office manager. So this office manager, she loves to bake. She always would bring goodies into um, the conference room where we would be working or into the lunchroom. And so I noticed that she had a cast on her arm. 
So I was talking with her about that and about how that was impacting her baking. She goes, yeah, I've actually gotten really good using my one hand and I can use this one a little bit. So she was saying that it definitely slowed her down, but she would be getting the cast off soon. And so she'd be able to get back into her baking more often. So once we got in the conference room, I set Lily up with her Toby and she independently navigated to her bookshelf off her homepage and started reading a book called Crazy Cakes, which I had adapted for her from reading A to Z. So this was interesting because that was totally the context of what she overheard um, the school office manager and I talking about. And so she went to this book where there's all these different designs of cakes that people had baked in the shapes of treasure chests. So anyway, through her access to her bookshelf in this specific book, she was setting the context for the conversation that's going on in the video. And I have to warn you that her AAC specialist and I get very excited when we're talking with Lilia. And so sometimes we're over talking each other. We have sort of the same thoughts of what we're thinking. Sometimes it gets a little noisy. So I've actually put in little captions so you know specifically the yes responses she's giving and how we're responding to them. You want to make some Halloween treats? Maybe chocolate brownies, since that looks like that's on your top ten. Ooh. We can, Ooh. yeah, oh. chocolate brownies since, and we can maybe do some, <laughs> yeah. some decorating of them with like Halloween, oh, like Halloween yes, oh my, that candy like corn. Amazing. We haven't baked yet this year. Oh. We have to make sure we yeah, you're like the kit, crazy cakes, crazy cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you're thinking that. about. We have to ask the. In high, high school. school. <laughs> oh, hey. That's awesome. That's but you awesome. have homes really good. We have, you know what, Lilia? Yes, it does, yeah. Lilia, <laughs> Mar Miss Marcella has connections at the high school, so yeah. she can maybe get us in to use the kitchen right, to bake over there. You are like totally she has connections. excited and lighting up about that. I see that. We used to bake a lot, right? I know. That were the, those were the fun days. <laughs> those were the days. Yeah. I know. <laughs> None of this work stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you could be reading about stuff like that, right? Oh, yeah, gosh. you're telling me you remember, and that whole thing, you know what, you're so clear in telling us different ways yeah. about what you're thinking about, because you are a big eavesdropper. You hear every conversation. You do, don't you? And so that makes you were thinking about something. <laughs> Reminded you about stuff? The baking. The baking, and... We used oh. to do so much baking. Wow. So fun, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What happened to us? You're making Susie's day. You no, know that, right? We're doing it again. That's, my, that's our project for Halloween. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> so in summary, after watching the video of Lilia interacting with her AAC specialist and myself, she used the following natural gestures to communicate yes in agreement with statements made by her communication partners. She lifted up her head, she smiled, and occasionally she giggled. She also looked in the direction of her communication partner, and that was her AAC specialist who was across the table to the right of her. And then she also established eye contact with her communication partner who was sitting on her left side, and that was myself. So she demonstrated a variety of yes responses not just a specific best yes. And her communication partners acknowledged each of those yes responses. And so that kept the conversation going. So it is very important to recognize and reinforce a best yes response and help shape it over time and increase its consistency. But it's also equally important to accept and respond to all of the ways an individual communicates yes and no at any given time. And as you can see in the video of Lilia, that supports social interaction, which I always call conversations, and strengthens connections with communication partners. This approach also helps to build trust that the communication partner will recognize and respond to the natural gestures he or she can use in the moment, and it helps to support communication ongoing. What I would like to shift to now is recommending specific activities that you can do to support communication and education of your son or daughter while you're at home. So one of the things that you can be doing is you could play a board game and I've got options and a video to show you about this and how you can support communication and participation in this activity. 
Another thing you can do is find a new recipe online or pull out a favorite recipe and bake cookies or muffins. And there's various adaptations and tools you can use to support engagement and participation during this activity. Another activity which supports communication and literacy is reading a book with your son or daughter with Rett syndrome. And I know you can't go to the library right now to get new books, but you can always purchase ones online and have these delivered. Or there are many resources where there's interactive books being read aloud online. I will share some resources where you can access interactive books or read aloud books online or through your mobile device, such as an iPad. Most of these are free, but then there are some subscription-based ones which actually give you access to a very wide range of commercially available books that are set up and adapted so they are read aloud while the text is actually being highlighted word by word or sentence by sentence. So I will share those that information with you. And the other thing that's very forefront in parents' minds right now is how to educate your child, teenager, or young adult at home during these unprecedented times. And I'm definitely going to suggest some resources that you can use. Many companies have been incredibly generous in offering free resources to their software, which support literacy learning. And these I will review with you so you can find ones that will help guide you through this process and support you as well. So I'm going to start off this activity of playing a board game by showing a video of Kira playing a board game with her mom, Patty, using a switch adapted dice roller and other adaptations. This video was originally shown in Dr. Mayor Lotan's Facebook live presentation through RettSyndrome.org on April 9th, 2020. The title of his presentation was Moves and Stretches for Tweens and Caregivers. And the recording of it is available on rettsyndrome.org slash COVID-19 hyphen resources. Although the video of Kira playing a board game with her mom was originally shown in Dr. Lotan's presentation, I wanted to make sure that everyone saw this incredible video because it applies to children, teenagers, and adults, not just tweens. I also wanna thank Kira and her mom, Patty, for being so generous in allowing me to incorporate this into my presentation to get it out to you. Uh, this dice, I don't really know what it's called, but it opens up and you can put any kind of dice in here. So if you have a color dice or number, um, and then once you put it on, you can either activate it by pushing down on it, but if that's too hard, you can activate it by connecting a, a little jelly bean switch to it. Hi there. We have propped up the game board so Kira can see it. We're just using a wedge pillow behind it with a few cake boxes to make sure it stands. And then we use double-sided tape for some of the pieces so it sticks to it. Certainly it can be flat, but this makes it easier for Kira to see this board. Okay, it's your turn. It's your turn to shake the dice. Untangle your fingers. Okay, one roll, that's all you get. Look at what's in there. It's a three. You got a three. Hold on. That is gonna be somebody else's turn. You're gonna start right here. One, two, three, and it says stormy weather. You need to make room for your new animals. If you have more than four animal cards, you have to return two of them. Let's count your animal cards. You only have one. You don't have to return any. Now it's mom's turn. Look what I got. A two. You're gonna touch that instead this time? Okay, now it's, you can look at what you got on there. Oh, six. Six, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lucky day. I absolutely love that video. I want to thank Kira and Patty again for their willingness to share this video with the RetSyndrome.org community. Patty provided me with additional information by email. 
The game in the video is Zurika by Cranium. When she looked it up on Amazon, Patty said that the price is way more than what they paid for it. So she did some further research and said that it still seems to be in production. So hopefully families can find a better price for that game. She also shared that they have used the dice roller with the game Orang You Twang. The dice indicates which item to hang off the orangutan. And when it gets too heavy, it pops and pieces go flying, just like you can see in the picture there. When I looked this game up myself, I was like, I want to buy it so I can play it with my family and other children. Patty also indicated that they help Kira hang the pieces. But on a good day, she said, we can use the see-through plexiglass board or it's also called an e-tran or an eye gaze frame or a cookie sheet with post-it notes to help Kira indicate where she wants the piece to be hung. So it could be like on the left arm, the right foot, etc. And she looked this up and she said it looks much cheaper on Amazon. I also looked it up and you could find it at Walmart and Target online, of course. And what I recommend too is if you don't have a plexiglass board, you can always use a see-through page protector and put sticky notes or symbols on the outside of this or on the inside in whatever layout or configuration works for your son or daughter. So other games that you can use a dice with, with the high roller, is Balloon Lagoon by Cranium. Patty recommended that one. I used to play that one with my son. I have to admit, I looked that one up on Amazon and it was pretty expensive as well. But then you can also look at using it with other standby games that have been around forever, like Candyland, Trouble, Shoots and Ladders, Monopoly, Monopoly Junior, any princess game, or there's other games that you can find related to your child's interests. One girl I was playing with, she loved Daniel Tiger. So her family had found a Daniel Tiger game, and that actually had dice as well that you could use. The switch adapted dice roller that Kira was using is called a high roller and it is available from enabling devices and the direct link to the product is displayed here in this video. I have also created a downloadable PDF file that would have these links on there because you can't click on them during the presentation, but you can on the document that I've attached to this presentation. Kira is using a jelly bean switch from AbleNet to access and operate the switch adapted dice roller while she was playing her board game. So if your son or daughter has a Toby Dynavox eye gaze system, whether this is a Toby i12, i12 plus, or Toby i13, or even a Windows Surface with Toby PCI Mini, you can access free page sets and download them for Communicator 5 from Toby Dynavox's Page Set Central. Now to do this, you can actually sign up for a free account. You can go to www.tobydynavox.com, which I have listed on this slide. They will ask you to indicate what country you're from. Once you do that, you're gonna click on the key in the top right corner of the screen, and you will be taken to a single sign-on where you can create an account or log in. Once you're logged in, you will be able to click on Page Set Central, as I've shown here. Then the next step, you can start searching for game pages for use on the Toby Dynavox. So what you wanna be looking for is Communicator 5 Page Sets, and there's a search feature positioned on the left side of the screen. Now, before you conduct a search, what I want you to do is you click the check boxes to specify the following. So for software, under that, you would click inside the checkbox for Communicator 5, then scroll down to Category, and you would click inside the checkbox for Games and Exploration, then scroll down to Language, and click the checkbox for English. What you want to do next is scroll up to the top, and in the search box, type Dice. You will see a page set called Color and Number Dice, you want to click on the button that says download and what you'll get access to is a page set where there are uh, color dice there are there's one dice or there's two die that you can use and your son or daughter can eye gaze and have those rolled so that you can be using to participate in any board game that needs those type of dice or die i should say 
Then, now what we're gonna do is typically once you download one of the page sets, it's like everything resets itself. So you've gotta go back up to the top in the search area on the left side and go through and click Communicator 5 again, Games and Exploration, and then English. And then at the top in the search feature, what you're gonna do is type Candyland. And there's actually a Candyland um, Dora version that you can download. And they've got different communication buttons on there that can say my turn, your turn, roll the dice, that type of thing. Now, another one that you can search for is called Children's Games to Play with Friends. And it probably will come up when you type in Candyland in the search feature. And the same things I had said before in terms of the options to help limit the search so you don't get like 200 pages to be searching through. If you go very specifically, you'll be able to find this. And this one that I want you to download if you're interested in having access to these games that are shown here actually was updated and adapted by Susan Lee. And this was from June 2019. So she's developed these pages, or I think she modified them from someone else that had put them up there, but she developed ones for Clue and Connect 4 and added on to those before the other ones were just four. So what you can get access to in this page set is access to page sets to participate with Candyland, Hi-Ho Cheerio, Clue, um, Shoots and Ladders, Go Fish, and Connect 4. And what... Um, Susan did in this one, she shows the Connect Four and the picture, what she's done is actually put letters across the Connect Four, so each column of the Connect Four, so the first column would be A, the second column is B, that type of thing. So your son or daughter could use their eye gaze system to choose which column based on the letter that they want to have one of the color chips put into. Now, if you're using this page with younger children, I highly recommend hiding the clue button in the Communicator 5 software. And the reason why is this definitely is for older children, I'd say teens. And so because there's some um, content in there and when you go into the page in the edit page, you'll be like, oh yeah, we don't need that. So I will actually show you how to hide that button from the page set in Communicator 5 next. So I have Communicator up and running right now on my computer, and I have the page set Playing Games with Friends up on my screen. And so what I'm going to do first is just go into some of the games so you can get a sense of how these are laid out. I'm gonna go click on Candyland. Let's play Candyland. And I can actually click on the spinner and where it says spin the spinner and it will actually name out game pieces or game moves of what you would have if you were spinning the spinner physically with your hand. One blue. Go to the peanut. You can also say... My turn. Your turn. And your son or daughter can also access a page where they can talk a bit more. Let's talk. And they can make comments. I like this. That was funny. I don't like this. So sad if someone has to lose a turn or go back. Let's play again. What do you think? Let's play a different game. And this, these, um, this Let's Talk page is actually the same across all pages. And so I'm going to go back. And the other one I want to show you is Connect Four, because this is where the columns are labeled with alphabet letters. Let's play Connect Four. Please put my piece in column A. Please put my piece in column C. So column C would be the third column in. Obviously letter A would be the first column in. And then there's things like I'm winning, this is fun. As I had said before, if your son or daughter is younger, in other words, not a teenager or young adult, then you're probably gonna wanna hide the clue game. And to do this, what you can do is hold your finger on the touch screen in between buttons, and then you'll get a square around where your finger's located. As soon as you see that square, you can release your finger from the screen, then choose Edit Page Set. And now to hide the clue button, I'm going to click on the clue button so it's outlined in red, so that's the active button. Then I'm going to go up to the menu bar Click on button and then click hidden. 
Now what you're gonna see is a little circle with a red line through it, and it's basically in the top left corner of the button. Now when I actually run the page set now, you'll see that the clue button is no longer visible. I'm gonna click on view, run, and see, clue button's no longer there. Now, it says unsaved changes up here in the top left corner. So what I'm going to do is hold my finger on the blue part of the screen, get that little square on the screen, release it, and then I can click save. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you how to go into each of the pages because there is a button that's linked to another page set that's going to take you out of this um, game and I don't want that to happen for you. So I'm going to go into Candyland. Let's play Candyland. Help me, please. That button's okay. But when I go to, where was I? I was in Let's play Connect 4. Now see, this Help Me button is actually got a little tipped up corner in the lower right part of the screen. That means it's linked to another page set. And you don't have that page set on your son or daughter's device. It's going to take you to a completely different screen. It's really frustrating, takes you out of the game. So what I'm going to do is help you hide that button. So what we're going to do again is hold your finger in between the buttons on the screen. You'll get that little square. Go into edit page set. Click on the button help me. Go up to button again in the menu bar. Click hidden. And then this time what we can do is to save a bit of time, we can go actually do file, save, or you can do it the other way too. So now if I go click on view and run, if I go into let's play connect for that button's no longer there. So it's not going to get me into trouble where your son or daughter gets bumped out of this page set into something else that looks really foreign. Um, so anyway, that's that. Let me go check the other ones too. So let's play hi ho cheerio. Good. That button just says help me. Let's play shoots and ladders. That one just says help me. That one's fine. Let's play go fish. Ah, under go fish as well. This button has a tipped up page or flipped up corner at the bottom right. So that means it's going to go out to another page or page set that's not available within this actual game page set. So what we're gonna do is, again, hold your finger between the buttons, get that little square, click on edit page set, click on help me so there's a red outline around it, click on button, hide it, you can click on view, run, and again, we have in the top right corner, or top left corner, I should say, unsaved changes. So you're going to hold your finger on the screen, click save. So the one other thing that you probably want to do is, and this is not definitely a Communicator 5 tutorial or something, but you will want to take care of this home button. You're either going to want to link that home button to your son or daughter's actual home page in Communicator 5. Or the other thing is if you're going to get your son or daughter into this and play games, you already know how to hide a button. So you can just go and hide the home button too. So I may be dating myself a little bit by mentioning this game, but just for fun, I did a search for Twister in Toby Dynavox's Page Set Central using the same categories I outlined before with Communicator 5 the games, and then English, and they actually came up with the page set called Twister Spinner by Shauna Toby Dynavox. And I did a Google search for the game Twister Online, and it's available through Amazon, Target, those type of places, and it was like $12.99 US. So it's still out there, believe it or not. So this is another game that could be totally great fun for the whole family. And <clears throat> this is the page set, the Twister Spinner, that you can download from Toby Dynavox Page Set Central. I'm actually going to go into Communicator 5 and give you a quick preview of what this looks like. I'm in Communicator 5 right now with the Twister Spinner Page Set loaded. And here's the different things that you can do. So it's like a spinner. It truly is. You can click on which part of the body it will be. Which part of the body will it be? And so if you click on it once, it spins it. 
the second time your son or daughter looks at it, it will actually left foot. It will select that one. Then you go to color. Which color will it be? It does the spin. And then the next time they look at it, yellow. it selects it. So that means that whoever is playing the game and your son or daughter is directing it through their Toby Dynavox device, the person whose turn it is would have to put their left foot on the yellow color. And then there's comments that are in here as well. Fall. So like, oops, they fell. And then it can also be cleared out, but you don't have to clear it out. You would just could go. And Which part of the body will it be? To spin it again. And then this would be the left, left hand. hand. Which on color will it be? Blue. On the blue circle. Now, the one thing is the exit button. Remember how I had talked about the home button? It could take you out somewhere. So I'm going to show you how to edit the exit button so it could go back to a home page that you've specified or to link to what's called a previous page set. So what I'm going to do is hold my finger on the touch screen, wait for that square to come up, choose edit page set. And the button actually is still, I'm going to make sure that exit button is selected and I can actually double click on it with my finger. So I'm going to double tap. It brings up the smart button types and actions and the action is go to. So I'm going to double click on that with my finger. And right now it's going to the startup page, which is in communicator five. That might not be where you want it to go. So I'm going to click on startup page and I would choose back to previous page set. Or another option is home page. Either one you can do, but at least that's how you can basically link that exit button to something that you really want it to go to. It could be a page, um, you might put a link for the twister spinner off a game page you might have, whatever works for you. So that's actually how you link the button to a specific page or page set. So I'll click OK. And then I can click Save. So I have to save the actions to the button. If I just click Close, it's going to not save my changes. I'm going to click on Close now. And then we're going to go up to View, Run. Hold my finger here on the screen and click Save. And it's ready to go. The final game that I recommend you search for in Page Set Central, if you're interested, is Uno. And so remember to have Communicator 5, the games, and English selected, and then just type up Uno in the search box at the top. And then this is the page that actually comes up. And you can just click on Download to access it. But this is a great one for Uno. There's a lot of things that you can communicate during it. It's all developed and ready to go. And this one was developed by Laura Bonenkamp. Now, if you're thinking of playing some card games with your son or daughter with Rett syndrome, what you might want to invest in is a card holder. There's games out there, obviously I mentioned Uno, there's even a themed game, Frozen Uno version, or you can play Go Fish or Hearts, and there's different variations of cards that you can be using with that. And so I always look at a curved card holder and there's one available, actually a set of two, available from Walmart when you search on Walmart's website and it's called Curved Wooden Card Holders. And it's very reasonable, I think it's about $15. And it's good to have the two because then you can spread the cards further out. So it's much easier to name the choices and wait for your son or daughter to give their best yes or one of their yeses to you to indicate which card that they want selected. Now, if your son or daughter has Toby Dynavox device and Communicator 5 loaded on it, there's actually an amazing language-based system in there that is called Sonoflex. One of the great things in Sonoflex are the context-based pages. And if you search for, you can look under games when you're trying to add symbol sets. So you could be looking for board games, Go Fish, Guess Who, I Spy, Puzzles, or Video Games. And these have typically three pages in each set. That first one includes like your pronouns, your verbs, or your action words, descriptors. And then sometimes there's room for actually like a noun that's related to the page or to the context, I should say, of the page set. 
And if you go to the second page, there's many more nouns that are specifically related to the context of the page set. And then if you go to the third page, there are actually phrases, pre-programmed phrases that relate to that specific topic or context that your son or daughter can use while playing a game. So there are a variety of options for combining single words, which is really important for language and literacy development. And then there's the quick phrases, which are on the third page, that can support that back and forth quick participation during a game. So puzzles, you might think, well, we're not gonna sit down and do a puzzle, but what I've got set up in our home is a table that has a puzzle laid out on it. So my son and I enjoy just sitting down together, it might not be for a long time, like 10, 15 minutes and start to work on the puzzle. So it's like an ongoing puzzle that we have working, that we're working on during this time, but it's just nice time to connect and relax and talk while we've got, um, while we're working on the puzzle together. And then we see the progress too over time. In terms of video games, if your son or daughter has any siblings that are older, especially, they're probably playing video games. So you can always set them up with their communication device alongside their brother or sister, and they can interact while they're playing the video game. So it's not just them sitting, not being able to participate and communicate, but they actually can engage. And sometimes you might have to sit down and facilitate this initially until you teach your son or daughter to respond to their brother or sister who's using their communication device. But then after that, the next, language naturally unfolds. If your son or daughter is using Toby Dynavox's Snap Core First for Windows language system, there's actually some game related topic pages in the Core First system. And within these topic based pages, there's actually pre programmed phrases. And there's also topic specific words that you can access that are related to playing games, for example. And there is also within the main page of the topic specific page, such as the games page, there's actually room to program some words that are related to the specific topic. And these topics of games, playing cards, or doing puzzles, they're available across all grid sizes. So if your son or daughter is using a 36 location one, which is a six by six arrangement, or a seven by seven grid size arrangement, then these following topics are available, just there'd be fewer buttons on each page or more buttons depending on what grid size you're using. Now, if your son or daughter is using Pranky Romit Company's PRC new voice software because they have an accent device with iGaze system, then there are also game-based activity rows and those are starting in the Unity 60 location, the one hit. They're also available in like Unity 60 two hit, these activity rows are not available in the fewer location user areas, such as a 36 location or a 45 location version of Unity one hit or two hit. So essentially what I'm doing is sharing what's currently available and ready to go, but that doesn't mean you couldn't reach out to your PRC consultant and ask them to help you in terms of copying these activity rows into your 45 location user area. So how you get to these activities within the Unity 60 one hit is in the activity row, you have to click on the more button and then you'll see have fun at the top. And then once you click on have fun, there's these different activities that come up and including like playing cars, but they're playing games with topics specific to board games with your turn, my turn. And there's also Uno specific activity row and there's a randomized buttons for the dice. So rolling dice, actually twisters on there. And then on the second row, when you hit more in that first activity row, then you get access to things like go fish and then just fun things for um, younger children to play. So I'm gonna give you a quick preview of how this works. So right now I'm in the Unity 60 one hit user area. And as I was saying, the games you can find in the activity row, which is at the top of your screen. And when I click on the more button, then I get access to this have fun button. And then that leads to all the different activity rows that I was showing you previously. So if I click on the playing button, 
So then I get access to things like my turn, your turn, deal. And these are actually like deal the cards. It's not just the word deal. And then, so there's pre-programmed phrases in here. Pick a card, roll the dice, move the piece. And then if you go to the next activity row here, it says things like no cheating. It says win or lose, but then you can combine it with the pronouns here. So you could say, I win, you lose. Or you could say, you, no cheating. So that's this one. That's the activity row for the game one. And then if I go click on more, I'm on my main activity row, click have fun. Then the randomized um, rollers, see, you can roll dice and it gives you two dice or two die and the results of that. And then here's the twister roller that's randomized. So it says right hand blue, left hand blue. If I click it again, right hand yellow. That's just similar to the one that I was showing you in Communicator 5. There's pick a color, so let's randomize colors depending on what game you're playing. And then I can go back, then I'm going to go over to more, and then there's other things like here's the Uno. So again, it's got the things programmed in there, so it's all ready to go. Now, if you have a 45 location user area, what you have access to when you actually access the play button then you would have access to this generic activity row for playing games. Now, if you have Smartbox's Grid 3 software on your son or daughter's communication device, you can access some games within this program as well. And how you do that is when you're in Grid Explorer, you can click on the main menu button in the top left corner of the screen. And then from that drop down menu, select Add Grid Set. You'll be taken to a window where there is an option for searching online grids. This actual button is in the lower right corner of that window. And then once you get into the online grid window, there's actually a little magnifying glass which resembles a search feature in the top right corner. And you could type in these options. So there's symbols for all board game chat or a symbols for all core word jigsaw chat, which is for puzzles. Then there's also an I Spy game that you can search for. And then there's a games collection one, which includes I Spy, a different version from the one that I'm showing in the top right there. And there's also a Simon Says game. And there's also a grid set up for Pokemon Go. Those give you some options. Within Smartbox's Grid 3 software too, when you set up a new user, there's actually a little collection of games called Challenges. Now these can be adapted so that you could be having a uh, sibling play with your son or daughter who's using eye gaze. And one of them is four in a row, which is like your connect four. Then there's a mountain biker one. There's a maze racer, which actually is not fast. You can actually just, you're basically directing a car through a maze. Then there's another game called Robo Snail and Bug Splat. I will go into grid three to show you some of these games so you get a flavor for what they are. Right now I'm in the challenges folder within grid three explorer and I'm going to go into four in a row and I'm gonna click on the start button. And then basically against the computer in this game and you can click on the right arrow to move over and then choose when you want to color chip. And then go here, for example, and say I want to drop a yellow one on top of the red one. And so that's how you can play the game. Now, there's also a chat feature in here. So you could be using this with the regular physical Connect 4 game and allows the child to be able to say a lot of different things. Now, you can also go to Opinions. And I really like this part too because he or she could say, I, I think it is awesome. awesome. Do you think it is cool? And so they can ask questions as well of their communication partner. Now, I did find a glitch while I was playing with this and checking it out. If I go to the chat, I get the message selected grid does not exist. And also when I went to the back, I reprogrammed this one so that it would go back, but it's not connecting. It gets the same message as well. So how do we fix this? Well, we're gonna go into the main menu 
and we're going to click on edit grid and I'm going to click on the back button and you can see that it says selected grid does not exist so we have to go click on browse and then basically we can go back to either the game four in a row or actually the original screen from four in a row but I'm actually going to go just to four in a row and then click OK and so now it should work then the chat I'm going to click on it and see how it says selected grid does not exist I'm going to click on browse and I want to go to four in a row vocab because that's actually the chat and we're in the opinion right now and so here the back button well it could go back to the game what I'm going to do now is click on finish editing and then it's going to ask me to save I'm going to click yes let's test it out to make sure it's working so I'm going to click on back so it took me back to the game I can go to chat I can go to opinions and I can click on back it goes back to there okay so that one's all fixed so now I'm going to go back to grid explorer and into the challenges folder and show you mountain biker and with this one it's open-ended and exploration so you can basically choose for example jump rocks he's got come up to it and he's riding along you can say okay this time go up and down up and down hill. and then you can see that there's check marks is showing that you've tried those different options now if i go back there's also a chat and you can talk about the experience in the game and you can do opinions and here it is the same type of thing about I think it is or do you think it is and this one goes back to the chat and then the back button is working so this one's fine let me just check one more thing because I'm pretty sure the back button yeah, no, this one's all working. So let's go to Grid Explorer, go into Challenges, and check out the Maze Racer. It's giving the intro. You can say, go there, and then it's like, well, which direction do I have to go? Do I go up, forward, reverse, left, or right? So you can be using partner assisted scanning even so you can be playing with a communication partner and they don't have to eye gaze to it all the time you could have it in pause and they can be directing which direction to go so if i click on up, oh and i'm going to click go forward and i'm going to turn right so you get a star Ooh, more complex one so now what do i do say for example i hit the left button it just sits there so it's really nice because it's not time dependent it's not like a real racing game where you have to be really fast but you can just have fun with it and you can go and get extra stars or you can go through and get out to you know where the green arrow is now let's go to the chat so you can talk about the game what you thought about it and you can give opinions and then oh no not again the back button and what about going back yeah, same type of thing so we're just going to go here to edit grid click on back and this can go back to can go back to the maze or actually in this case i should go back to the maze racer menu or this is the opinions one, so it can go back to the rate maze racer vocabulary. And we'll click OK. And then this one can go directly to the chat. Again, which is the maze racer vocabulary. Click OK. And then when we go to, let's go, say for example, I want to go to the other grid set and just make sure it's connected. Let's go to the maze racer vocabulary make sure this back button is connected it goes back to the maze racer menu which is good okay so it should be all finished let's click finish editing save and test it out it goes back to here i click on chat i go to opinions
and then ultimately I can go back to the vocabulary and then back out of the back to the maze racer gate. I'm gonna click on Grid Explorer. Let's check out Robo Snail. And so here in this game, it's a bit more involved. You have to match the action to what's shown on the wooden guidepost. So for here, it's actually walk. So that helps Robo Snail walk. And it's like, ooh, what do I need? Probably, let's see, a jetpack? No, not that. It takes you back, it's like, oh, maybe a water can. There we go. Ooh, how am I gonna cross over this? A jetpack maybe? There we go. And then we'll go back. Now let's take a look at the chat. And so with this one, you can chat. And there, this one's actually working beautifully. So Robo Snail's working and connected beautifully. Let's go into the final one, Bug Splat. And this one, you have to have, you have a certain amount of time to look at the bug to splat him on the wall. And it has to be used with eye gaze. I don't have an eye gaze system hooked up right now, but you can see in the lower left corner that there's a timer giving you time to basically look at the bug and put splat him on the wall. And then we can click on go back and then we have the chat feature. Now with here, you can there's numbers that you can link to. There's also, it goes back to the chat and there's colors that you can talk about in terms of it is or my favorite is. And then you can go to the chat again. When I click on opinions, it takes me to the opinions for bug splat. And then when I click on chat, oh, it takes me to mountain biker vocabulary. So we need to go back and fix that. And if I try and go to opinions, does it take me back? Probably is. Oh. Yeah, it went into the mountain biker opinions. So what we need to do is go up to the main menu, go to Grid Explorer, and we're gonna go back into Bug Splat. I'm gonna go into the chat, and I'm going to click on opinions because it's the link to the chat that we need to fix. So I'm gonna go up to the main menu, choose Edit Grid, and I'm gonna click on the chat. Oh yes, and it says jumping to mountain bike vocab. So we're gonna click on browse and fix that. We're gonna to go to bug splat vocabulary. Click okay. And then back, we're just gonna check. That goes to the bug splat menu. So let's do finish editing. Click yes to save. Okay, so now when we go to chat, it's going to, if I go to opinions, so here's the opinions for bug splat. And if I click on back, it goes back to bug splat, the original. So that's fixed. Okay, so I know I have covered a lot in games, but with a little bit of setup it is well worth the time investment. Playing games with family members is a way to foster deeper connections and relationships across all family members, including siblings, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and neighborhood friends during these COVID times and beyond. While I was working on recording more of this webinar this morning, an amazing idea came to me that actually during these stay at home times, you could extend game time to remote game time with family members and friends outside your home. You might be like, what? How are you going to do this? So with a Gmail account, you get access to Google Calendar and you can schedule an appointment with Google Hangout as the video interface and invite others to join and display them on a computer. Or the other option is to use WhatsApp with video on your phone or tablet. And the benefit of this using FaceTime is you're running off your Wi-Fi, so you're not using up your data. And then you can set up the other player on the computer or the phone or the tablet at the kitchen or dining room table as if they were there in person playing alongside you. Now, you can have siblings play any of the games, 
with your son or daughter, but also incorporate grandparents. And I would start with grandparents first, just as a you know starting place. So you'll probably need to do a practice run through and guide the game in order to make sure siblings are supporting participation and giving turns for everyone to talk when it is their turn. But after that, that's something that could be set up that you as parents don't have to be running, but your kids could be running, or you can be setting it up with your son or daughter who's using their communication device with grandparents. Or, and they don't even have to have a communication device. You could be using just sticky notes with, you know, your turn, my turn, roll the dice, I want to do over, and this have those on even a page protector and just point to them as you name the choices with partner assisted scanning. So anyway, this wraps up my section on games that you can really connect with family and friends. So let's talk about one of my favorite topics, baking. So I've been doing this with Lilia Munn, her mom, Vera Adamovich, her AAC specialist and myself, we've been connecting remotely and having remote sessions with Lilia. So we've been on a computer connecting by Google Hangouts and the computer's positioned to Lilia's right side because that's her natural eye gaze pattern for her yes response. And then what I've been doing is customizing the cooking page in the dynamic communication book, also known as the Patty Judy pages, and setting this up for different recipes that we've been doing. What I've been doing is adding in on the ingredients page the specific measures of the specific ingredients that are related to the recipe. And then there's always the page where she can direct the activity in terms of pouring, stirring, putting it in the oven, that type of thing. So what Lily is doing is using her Toby Dynavox i12 Plus with Communicator 5 to direct her mom, who's the her hands basically, in terms of adding in the different components of the recipe, you know, mixing it up, pouring it into the muffin cups, and we're giving her time to direct the activity. We're not just rushing through it. It's Lilia who's in the driver's seat in this through her communication. And we are having so much fun. Lilia is really a baker. She loves it. And so she's so highly motivated about this. And she's really excited by having both myself and her AAC specialist on and seeing us remotely through the Google Hangouts on her um, mom's laptop. So what we baked so far are gluten-free peanut butter cookies, the banana muffins. This week coming up, we're making vanilla cupcakes with buttercream frosting. And then Lilia's mom's gotten different sprinkles and things that we can add for decoration. Then another thing that's going to be coming up is rice pudding. So all sorts of wonderful desserts and baked goods. And Lily is becoming quite the food critic. She's we're rolling in writing into this activity so she can write about the recipe, which one she likes best, that type of thing, and what she if she would recommend it for somebody else to bake as well. I have to tell you that Lily is AAC specialist. She's a baker herself, so she finds the best recipes ever for us to make. And Lily is the one tasting it. And so she's the one telling us how it tastes, given we're not there to sample it with her. So some other people are seeing baking as an opportunity for active participation and engagement with their son or daughter. And so I'm going to show you a video of Kira baking muffins with her mom, Patty, and she's using a switch to control a mixer and then different adaptations to help with holding the cooking utensils. And this video was originally shown in Dr. Mayor Lotan's Facebook Live presentation on April 9th, 2020. And the title of the presentation was Moves and Stretches for Tweens and Caregivers. And you can view it at www.retsyndrome.org slash COVID-19 hyphen resources. I didn't want the younger children to miss out on it or adults. So Patty was very generous in letting me incorporate this video of Kira and herself baking and using different adaptations. The power link swing switch can be used um, with anything that you can turn on and leave on. So I've got my blender turned on here. I just plug it in and I've got it set up for Kira that it, it is set to be on for three seconds and then it turns off. 
Uh, you can also set it up that it, the switch would turn it on and then you'd have to hit the switch again to turn it off again. So we just hook up her jelly bean switch into the side of it. Um, and there's also capabilities to have two things plugged into this device at the same time. One egg, one small can of pumpkin, one box of spice cake mix, and then we add the chocolate chips, okay? You are gonna have your switch to do the mixing. So one egg, do you wanna hold it? Ooh. It's cold. Yeah, we're not ready yet. We're gonna crack it, okay? Three, <laughs> two, one, and crack. Here it goes. There it is. And one box of cake mix. Help me hold that. Let go of the switch. Ready? Tum 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 tum. Tum tum tum. Ooh, I can smell it. You wanna smell it? Good stuff. Okay, now we have to open the can of pumpkin. Look what I have. You can hold it. Yeah, you can hold it. Get your fingers in there. There you go. You got it? Don't bonk yourself in the head. Okay. There's no licking it. Ready? We're just going to dump half in. Roughly. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, here's your switch. You get to turn on the blender. <gasps> okay, it's not done yet. You get to turn on the blender again. <laughs> again. I think we can turn it up, make it go faster. Woo! Couple more times. Is that good? Okay. Okay, we're gonna take this. We have to add the chocolate chips. Ready, Kira? We're gonna measure. You're gonna hold on. There. How about if you hold on to the handle? There. Hold on there. It says, look at right up here. It tells us three fourths cup of mini chocolate chips. We might like this is one cup. We might like to give it some extra. Ready? Ooh, they're coming out. There you go. That looks like a lot. I am going to pour it in for you, okay? Because it's kind of drippy. But we'll put it back on stir. Your job is to stir it. I think it needs to be stirred a little bit more. They're still pretty lumpy in there. Look at that. Can you see that? Okay. Oh, that's what it looks like. How about one more time?
three, two, one. There you go. Okay. I think you got it. One more time for good measure. Now we're going to scoop. Keep it up on the tray. Scoop. Gum. Scoop. Gump. Scoop. Gump. A little bit more. Woo! Boom, boom, boom. Watch your fingers. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> there you go. Oh, we can move this finger. Ooh. Kira, it's making a bunch of noise. We just need a little bit more in that one. Okay. There are your pumpkin muffins to go in the oven. Got just a little bit on you. There we go. Can I have that? Thank you. All ready to go in the oven. Woohoo! There they are. I first want to thank Patty and Kira for that wonderful video of baking, giving parents lots of ideas as to different tools that can be used to support active participation in activities that you would normally do at home. The other thing I want to draw your attention to, and after I talk about this, you may want to go back and rewatch the video of Patty and Kira again, is that Patty used some really effective strategies with Kira. One of the things that she did was she wrote out a larger copy of the recipe and she read it to Kira while she was following along and completing different steps of it. She positioned the recipe in an upright position and in plain sight throughout the process. So it was on like a little, looked like a recipe stand, but it was in Kira's view so she could refer to it and it was in larger print. So Patty made reference to the recipe when she was adding ingredients. She would bring it closer to Kira, show her the stuff that they were doing, for example, adding the chocolate chips, and then would move the recipe a little further away so they had room for the materials on Kira's tray. The other strategies that Patty used really effectively related to supporting Kira's switch use. For example, she said, your job is to stir it, or it needs to be stirred a little bit more, so what she ended up doing is labeling Kira's switch activation and matching that to the function or outcome of using the switch. Essentially, in this case, it was to stir the ingredients. She never said hit or push your switch, which is a really good practice. You do not want to be saying hit or push your switch. You want to provide a verbal prompt that focuses on the outcome of the switch activation. She gave the prompt and then she waited quietly for Kira to process it and also move her hand to activate the switch. And she didn't keep saying, stir it. Hey, remember you need to stir it or anything like that. She said, hey, you know what? Your job is to stir it. And then she waited and provided time for Kira to move her hand and position. Because remember, she needs time to process that command and it's not understanding the command. It's basically for the neurons to connect all the way from what her thought or idea is of what she needs to do to connect to her hand to make that movement. The other thing that Patty didn't use that I just loved was she was not using hand over hand assistance for helping Kira with the switch activation. She would hold it into position or move it into a location where she saw Kira could access it and then she stabilized it and she held it there for her. But Kira was initiating and activating the switch by herself, which was awesome. That's what you want. It was beautiful. Patty also incorporated some very effective strategies when supporting Kira's use of the baking utensils. For one of the things that she did, she always ensured that Kira visually attended to the process throughout. So she wasn't just using hand over hand while Kira was looking away, which is what I see a lot of times in schools when children are involved in hand over hand activities with manipulatives 
or hand like drawing or art activities, painting. Typically, the girl's hand or the boy's hand is moved by the person who's supporting them, and it's moved, you know, without their visual attention to the activity at all. And that's not effective hand over hand use because typically they're like passively involved; they're not actively engaged in the process. But Kira was actively engaged throughout this process. It was wonderful to see, and she also incorporated both hands in the process. For example, Kira held the cup independently. While the chocolate chips were being poured in, and she also held the muffin tin. Patty made the hand over hand assistance with the spoon and putting the mix into the muffin tins, more of a sensory activity by tapping the spoon on the muffin tin. And given Kira was holding the muffin tin, she could feel that and hear that. And so that was a really good way to support her visual attention and engagement while using the hand over hand assistance with the utensils. Talking a bit more about hand over hand assistance, Dr. Mayor Lotan had a very insightful discussion about hand over hand assistance and how to support active participation rather than passive movement. So I always talk about going through the motions or motoring through an activity. That's not what you want to be doing. You want to slow it down. And Dr. Mayor Lotan's Facebook Live presentation on April 9th, twenty twenty, the t- one titled "Moves and Stretches for Tweens and Caregivers." He talks about hand over hand and the timing of providing it, so that it's not just provided throughout the activity, but at specific times. And then he also talks about providing the least amount of support possible,、um, so that it's not just taking and moving the hand through the process of whatever the activity is. And that's always been my objection to hand over hand. And so I've always supported communication to direct another communication partner in the activity of doing. The activity, sort of being their hands, so to speak, because I have not supported using hand over hand. However, hand over hand is really great when it's done effectively and incorporating the strategies that Patty was using with Kira. So it's taking the time to support active movement, and that supports the neurons firing and dendrite growth. That's what you want to see. I remember in a presentation, this was many, many years ago, where they had done. EMGs on the brain of a child being involved with different activities. I think during their physical therapy session, and they showed the parts of the brain that lit up during passive range of movement as compared to actively helping with the moving process. And you could see that there was hardly any parts of the brain lit up during the passive movement. So when there was active movement during the physical therapy session, you could see that there was. Many more parts of the brain being lit up because neurons were firing. More neurons were firing, and that supports dendrite growth. But there were more neurons firing during the active movement, and that's what you saw too with Kira. She was actively moving her hands during this activity, and so that's what we want: active participation in activities, not passive movement or passive involvement, just sitting on the periphery. That's why I've been showing you all these videos of girls actively involved in different activities and making suggestions of how to support this. Just before I finish off with the baking activities, I want to reference the baking resources that Patty used with Kira in the video. The first one is the PowerLink Four, and there's both North American versions and version a version for Central Europe. Obviously, that's because of the cords for plugging in the power devices. And there's the information for where you can get this through ablenet.com, and then the utensil holders that Patty was using with Kira, which I thought were so cool. They're called Easy Hold for Utensils, and I've got the website up on this slide. And there's different variations, different sizes you can get, and there's also you can get packages of three versus five. But I just wanted to show you what these look like. So as parents, if you're just needing a quick Five minutes to yourself, and instead of having your son or daughter watch her favorite movie or DVD again, you can search up YouTube videos of books being read aloud for some independent reading time. One YouTube website I came across is Brightly Story Time, and they have stories like The Hungry Caterpillar. They even have Elmo's Tricky Tongue Twisters as one of the books that's read aloud. And what are different about these books is they include Color highlighting of individual words as these are read aloud, and there's not other animation in the books to distract the attention from the print. 
but the color highlighting of individual words as they are read aloud helps to draw your son or daughter's attention to the print, thereby watching a YouTube video of a book being read aloud especially if the words are being highlighted without music or other distracting features, it supports their literacy development. So I'm gonna show you another video of Nina. And in this video, she's using my copyrighted video player that I've developed for grid three. And Nina and her brother are watching a video of a read aloud book together. And they're actually watching one of the videos I referenced before, The Hungry Caterpillar. And I've also developed the same video player for Toby Dynavox's Communicator 5. And what I want to draw your attention to is how engaged Nina is in watching this read aloud of the book. So let's watch the video. Camel. Did they send me a camel, Nina? I sent him back. I want to choose a different video. Oh, she chose a different one. Oh, Nina, <laughs> you chose Caterpillar. I'm Miss Linda. But Nina, you look like nothing. You can sign up to get no, no, wait, wait. I think it's coming. And videos like these Nina, what did you choose? Today, we're going to read about a little caterpillar. Make it quieter. Oh, she wants to make it quieter. Let's make it a bit quieter. Is it too loud? Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carr. Okay, we made it quieter, Nina. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up, and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. Oh my goodness, Nina, tiny caterpillar! He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one as I had said at the beginning of my webinar before, that companies both in the field of augmentative and alternative communication, as well as software developers that are focused on literacy instruction and support have been incredibly generous in offering free trials or access to free resources through the end of June. One of these companies is Raz Kids, which is a component of learning A to Z. And what RAS Kids includes is read aloud leveled books for elementary school level that are fiction books. These are age respectful, but they're nonfiction books about a variety of topics can be extended from pre-kindergarten through high school. And the books include color highlighting of individual words as these are read aloud, and they are offering free access through the end of the school year for educators and families throughout the United States and Canada. And so you can sign up for a free account at www.razkids.com. So right now I am on the Raz Kids website. And as you can see in the address bar at the top, it is raz-kids.com. I want to draw your attention to this blue graphic here because this is where you get access to the Raz Kids for the rest of the school year. So I'm going to click on get access here. And then scroll down. And then you can click on Raz Kids to start the subscription. And as I had said before, this gives you access to many, many books that are nonfiction for pre K all the way up through high school. And nonfiction books can cover a wide range of age levels, given it may be based on more interests. And so you can find always a book that's based on your son or daughter's interest. If your son or daughter is between the ages of kindergarten school age and fifth grade, there's many fiction books that are age respectful and may be engaging and interesting to your son or daughter on Raz Kids. The other thing to know about Raz Kids is that they have a mobile app for iPhone or iPad or Android and even Kindle Fire, and it's called Kids A to Z. And you just need to log into this app with your Raz Kids username and password. At this point, don't worry about the lessons on here or the quizzes. It's more about having access to a wide range of books so you can find books that are related to your son or daughter's interests. One of the companies that specializes in literacy software, Don Johnston, is offering free access to two units of their Retopia curriculum through the end of June.
Retopia supports literacy learning from emergent to conventional literacy levels with age-respectful content specific to late elementary, such as middle school, through high school. And they offer two versions of curriculum. One is based on Dr. Doolittle, and then another one's on working together. Those are the themed units that they're offering free access to. And even though your son or daughter may be younger than these ages, I encourage all families, clinicians, and educators to sign up for this and take advantage of access to the Readtopia curriculum units. You're getting full access to an amazing literacy resource. It is truly a gift to have access to this material. I guarantee you it's going to change how you provide literacy instruction or if you're already providing literacy instruction in this manner, it's just going to reinforce and enhance what you're already doing. Why sign up for Readtopia? Well, the curriculum integrates many of the best strategies and literacy supports that are considered to be essential for literacy instruction by who I consider to be the experts in the field of literacy for individuals with disabilities and especially for children with complex communication needs and that's Dr. Karen Erickson and Dr. David Copenhaver. So my first introduction to Karen and David was when I was doing my literature review in preparation for my research study for my master's of education thesis. And I have to tell you, I was hooked. They had such amazing information and belief about all children being able to benefit from literacy learning experiences and instruction which I knew from working in an augmentative communication clinic in London, Ontario, working with these children with complex communication needs, I knew, yes, we were supporting their communication, but it was like, what about teaching them to read and write? And that's how I started my journey into the world of literacy learning for individuals with complex communication needs. But in terms of Karen and David, when I said I got hooked, I became like a roadie and would follow them and try and get to as many presentations and read as much content as they had that they published, whether it was through websites or their books or when they were presenting at conferences that I was attending. Karen and David are true leaders in this field. And I'm really excited to share with you, you may not be aware of this, but they've published a new book. And their book is called Comprehensive Literacy for All, teaching students with significant disabilities to read and write. And it was just published and released in January. And as I read it, it is like I am immersed in one of their presentations or workshops or the summer literacy seminar I attended with them many years ago, or even some of the conversations we've had. And it's just amazing. It includes case studies that are very inspirational and informative. It takes you on a journey from emergent literacy through to conventional literacy, but it gives you all the information as the activities that you should be doing to support and teach literacy and also the research behind it, the evidence behind it, the reason why, and then also the how. And so it's just amazing. And so I highly recommend it. And you're really like, really, Judy, I've already got so much on my plate right now, so I'm not trying to burden you with this, but if you, I know as parents, you are strong advocates for your son or daughter and your IEPs. And some of you have even switched to homeschooling. Well, at this point, all of us are involved in homeschooling our children. And so it can be a support for you down the road. So I'm not saying, I just want you to be aware of it. I'm not saying you need to read it. Some parents may be like, oh my goodness, I'm at this stage where I'm ready to jump into, learn more about it. But that is why I am suggesting that you look at Retopia. Let's go to donjohnston.com. In the address bar, you can type in actually just donjohnston.com. And once you press enter, you'll actually get taken to this website, learningtools.donjohnston.com. And it's going to ask you to accept cookies. So we'll accept cookies. And then what we're going to do is click on this link right here where it says click here to see what we're doing to make e-learning more accessible we are scrolling down because there's a lot of information up at the top but what we want to get to is the section on resources for parents of students with complex needs so we can click on guide to assist parents or caregivers and we are going to scroll down 
It talks about e-learning for students with complex needs. And keep scrolling until we get to the section that talks about Readtopia program components. This describes the different components that are included in the Readtopia curriculum that you would get access to. So it gives you access to reading for a comprehensive reading curriculum and resources. So, and it's based on informational text, but there also includes phonics and word study, videos and books or graphic novels across seven different levels. So there's also some math lessons, but then there's also social studies and then science. Now, if you scroll down further, it talks about how parents can support teachers who are already using Readtopia. And my personal experience and my educated guess is that not many students or schools are using Readtopia, so you may not have had experience with it. But if you keep scrolling down, this is the part that I want to draw your attention to, is how parents can use these components at home independently. So it says if your school is not using Readtopia, there's two units available for you to use for instruction for free. And we're not worried about the discount at this point because you have access to this through June. And so what we're going to do is actually go into how you can try it for free. And then it talks about the different components that are included. And then you scroll down more and then it says getting access to Retopia materials at home. So you can click on here to create an account. And then you just fill in your name and information. Make sure to click, I'm not a robot, and then click next. And then what I'm going to do is after you go through those steps, I'm going to actually go into my account to show you what's available. Now, remember, I said for everyone to sign up for this if you don't already have access to Readtopia, even if your child's younger, because the instructional materials in here can be applied to the books I was sharing with you in Raz Kids. Because that's why I was saying, don't worry about the quizzes. Don't worry about the lesson plans in there. I want you to follow lesson plans in Don Johnston's Readtopia and apply them to those. Yes, I know it means a bit more work, but this gives you a guide so you can actually swap out the book that would be in here in Readtopia. That's definitely for, you know, middle schoolers and high schoolers. But you could use a nonfiction book from Raz Kids that's more geared to your son or daughter's age level, but also interest level. That's really important. So even if your son or daughter is, you know, middle school level and high school, and these books don't interest him or her, then you can always look at Raz Kids for a fiction book. However, I think the one Dr. Doolittle will be pretty universal in terms of the different animals that they talk about, that type of thing. And there's really good videos for it. So I definitely encourage you to try the Readtopia, the Dr. Doolittle one, or even the working together. I, I know that some teens I work with, they're interested in like outdoor garden things. And so this one has information about bees and working together. And right now the theme of everything is working together, given these unprecedented times that we're in. Once you sign up for Readtopia, you will get access to this page. And the two free units are the upper elementary unit, which is the one, as I said, based on the story of Dr. Doolittle that focuses on animals. This is the other unit called Working Together and includes a focus on bugs. So let's take a look at the upper elementary unit. And to do that, I'm going to click on View. And you get access to all of these resources. So aside from the teacher guide, I wanna show you some of the components or supports that accompany each part of the different lessons. So let's go up here to chapter one. So there's definitely the unit resources. And in here, there's like video lessons. So it tells you, please see the following video lessons for this unit, lesson one. So this is the video lessons for all levels. This is video lesson screenshots, video lesson activities, and then there's the math instruction. So you can download these. Then there's the leveled readers. So there's two for emergent level of literacy, then two for transitional and one for conventional level of literacy. And you might be like, well, I don't know which one to start at. Well, take a look. And there's actually some resources to help guide you with that too. Here's the emergent level literacy one. 
So, and you can tell by the content on the pages. So let's take a look. So here, so this is for emergent literacy level one. And so it has simple text. This is Dr. Doolittle. Dr. Doolittle likes people. Dr. Doolittle likes animals more. So you can definitely even model on your son or daughter's communication device going to a language system that has core words. You can model the word is is going to be there. Likes will be there. People and you can find animals and the word more is there too. So it's set up so that the words in here are high frequency core words. Here's another one. Look at his house. He has lots of animals. And what they do, which is really great too, they have the picture that can be very busy, but then they bring another one up close. And you can talk about this and they will guide you through this. Look at, this is Jip, his dog. This is Chi Chi, his monkey. So it's very predictable text. The words like this is, or Dr. Doodle likes, those type of things. So there's high frequency core words in here. This is Polynesia, his parrot. So again, it follows a pattern. This would be a great one to start at for many if you aren't sure about where to start. It's always better to start with easy text because that's gonna support engagement and interest. If you go too hard or too high, your son or daughter, it's gonna be hard and they're gonna lose interest. That's not gonna support their engagement to support their learning and their interest and their comprehension of it, okay? Focus on easy reads and you're teaching new skills with it in terms of the comprehension strategies. So it's easier to actually use easier text. Now, of course, some of your son or daughters are gonna be further along than this, but it will, you can go and look at the text and get a sense. There was also a file that I downloaded that compared the different levels of literacy in the Retopia as compared to the Fontis and Pinnell levels, which are in the reading A to Z or the Raz Kids levels. So you can even, if they've been doing more reading A to Z, you can compare what level they're at, like level D, might be the emergent level here of level two or something. I will include that handout in the downloads that accompany this webinar. So let's exit out of this Dr. Doolittle book, the emergent level literacy level. And I'm gonna click on the go back button and we'll go back to the teacher guide by scrolling up to the top. This is a must download, it's a PDF. Don't print it, it's quite a few pages. So I'll click on it to download it. And then what you want to do is actually click here because that just opened it. Now you're going to click on here to download it. So let's start taking a look inside. So I want you to take a look at the contributors to Readtopia and draw your attention to Karen Erickson. She contributed to this as well as Caroline Musselwhite. And she actually did a couple of webinars that are available through Don Johnson's website, which I'll show you later, that you can access to give you more information about Readtopia. I'm scrolling down. So it says to print the teacher guide, but you can actually leave it as a PDF on your computer. And it gives you all the different components. And as I say, just relax, there's a lot of information there. But what I want to show you is these are some of the instructional strategies and they go into much more detail because you might be looking like, I don't know how to do these. Well, they give you the information about how to do it. So I'm still scrolling down and it's going all into this. It's going into the thematic unit. It tells you that the thematic unit has 131 lessons. Do not panic. Remember, this is a month. Even if it takes you two months, that's fine. But the lessons alone are between 15 to 30 minutes. So it's not like you're going to spend two hours at one time on this. 15 to 20 minutes, you know, in some cases 30 if your son or daughter's in a good zone, right? So those are little chunks to look at. And so there's lots of material in here. So let's go down. Those are all the lessons. So lesson one. So basically it's a video lesson and it's to identify, the topic is to identify a monkey's physical traits. 
it gives you an anchor activity. So there tells you exactly what to do, printing the annual picture cards, and you don't have to print them. You could actually just show them on an iPad. You can draw on a piece of paper, graphic organizer, what's same, what's different. And then it tells you how to activate the background knowledge. And while you're talking about the same and different graphic organizer, and then basically you can, here's the, it says, say, we are going to begin reading an exciting new book. The name of this book is the story of Dr. Doolittle. So you show the front cover. You basically say what is there. It's a script. And it tells you exactly what materials to have downloaded and be presenting at the same time. And then it gives you questions to direct the video watching. So it's not a matter of just watch this video. It's like, okay, while you're watching this video, I want you to answer and think about these questions. In what ways are monkeys all alike? How are monkeys different from apes? How are monkeys the same as apes? And then you watch the video without stopping. And then you do the apply. Say these words here. We just watched a video about monkeys. The video showed us three ways, et cetera, right? Now, talks about handing out level response. That's going to be different, of course, right? There's going to be all these different ways of doing things. You're like, I don't even know how to get my head around doing this. And I understand. So what I want to show you is, so I'm going to go to donjohnston.com. And then here, I want you to click on webinars and summits and click on webinars. So there's live webinars, but there's also on-demand webinars. And the one that is really good that I just watched actually last week was e-learning instruction for students with complex needs. It looks like, and it's presented by Caroline Musselwhite and Jean Marie Jacoby. And so it goes here and basically you can sign in and you'll get access to it. So what they do in the webinar is give you specific ways you can present the material, whether someone's using eye gaze to look at choices or even partner assisted scanning where the choices are named and then you look for their indicator of best yes or their yes, any yes response to select something. And then that's it. it. This is not about testing, it's teaching and then applying comprehension strategies to what's been read to them or what they're reading. And what I suggest is don't try and do this on your own. Ask for help. So help you can get from teachers. Teachers are working right now. Yes, they're working remotely, but reach out to your son or daughter's teacher and ask them to sign up for this website. Ask them specifically also to look at this webinar on e-learning. It is really instructional. I learn so much from even watching it in terms of options I can use when I'm doing remote sessions with children right now. It's definitely worth the time now. It's like, okay, say maybe you're not getting support from your son or daughter's teacher. Another option is think of some a family member right now. So it might be a, a brother or sister who's older, maybe in high school who can take this on and work with you and you might have to work with them initially to get going but then once they know what to do then they can be providing and working with your son or daughter on the instruction for literacy it will be great these kids right now they're home they're not running off to their soccer games they're not running off to their basketball teams they're not running to the mall with their friends they're home so it's a great time to capitalize on this and the thing about the e-learning instructions like well i don't have anyone at home with me your brother or sister may have their son or daughter who's in high school or even college level that would be loving to help and make a big difference and impact in helping you. They can do it from where they're at. This is e-learning. So this webinar gives you some really great ideas as to how to teach the Retopia curriculum, or you can apply the Retopia curriculum, as I said, to a book of interest from Raz Kids. And it's like, just take one lesson at a time. Don't look at the big picture, just one day at a time, one lesson at a time. But know in the end that you're going to be providing excellent literacy instruction to your son or daughter, and they're gonna see changes unfold. So it is worth the time and the investment. And as I say, don't think you have to do it on your own. You might even have, if you don't have access to family members, then I'm sure there's a neighborhood friend 
who would be willing to do this and support your son or daughter in this. I mean, it's reading and writing together. And it's fun because they're going to see, they can watch each other and connect with each other over video. So it's like a video chat, but with a purpose. I want to end this recorded webinar with a discussion about shared reading and to point you to a resource that is really incredible to support you in shared reading experiences with your son or daughter. First of all, shared reading experiences represent one of the essential activities of comprehensive emergent literacy instruction. Emergent literacy consists of all reading and writing behaviors and understandings that proceed and develop into conventional reading and writing. And this is a direct quote from Karen Erickson's and David Copenhaver's recent book, Comprehensive Literacy for All, Teaching Students with Significant Disabilities to Read and Write. And I've referenced that earlier in this recorded webinar. The other thing to know is even if your son or daughter is already reading, shared reading experiences still support an individual's interactions and language development through use of core vocabulary. And this can be really supportive of individuals using their new communication device or existing communication device and the language system within it. Through shared reading experiences, you are modeling the use of core words. Just the other day, I was skimming through the Rett Syndrome Communication Guidelines and was just checking out the resources at the end of the book. And I came across Appendix 5, which included links to useful websites and organizations. And at the end of it, there was actually links to free resources and advice sheets for AAC and literacy. So I went down to the literacy section and I saw Tar Heel Reader, which I have known about for a long time, which is a website that has accessible online books. Then I came across a new resource that I was not aware of called Tar Heel Shared Reader. So of course, I immediately started looking into this because I'm like, what is this? And I learned that it's been developed by the Center for Literacy and Disability Studies. And the website is right here on this presentation. It's www.sharedreader.org. And it is an amazing resource. Incredible. Basically, I consider it a gift for supporting communication, language, and interaction with print for individuals with Rett syndrome. The books that you have access to on this website are originally from Tar Heel Reader, but they have an interface called Tar Heel Shared Reader interface overlaid on top of them, which is amazing. And it will apply across all ages and support use of light tech communication systems or a communication device with eye gaze technology. I consider this resource to apply to all communication partners of individuals with Rett syndrome. So it'd be family members, educators, or clinicians. This is something that's going to be used now very easily. There's no setup to it. So it's ready to go and it's free. All of it's free. And it's not just free during this coronavirus times, it's free all the time. So it's something that can be used long-term. Let's take a look at Tar Heel Shared Reader. So as I had said earlier, the website is sharedreader.org, and this is the homepage of the Tar Heel Shared Reader. And there's Karen Erickson working with a student and reading a book. And so what you wanna do when you get to the homepage is scroll down, but here it just gives a bit of information about what Tar Heel Shared Reader is. It is a new shared reading interface that supports adults and engaging students more actively and in constructing meaning from texts. And so it talks about shared reading. And as I had said before, that it does support communication and language and interaction. And it also builds an understanding of print concepts. And when you're involved in shared reading, the goal is not to get to the end of the book. It's to be interacting with your son or daughter each page by page. And there are instructional practices that are consistently used. There's one called follow the car and then putting the crowd in the car. Now let's take a look at the quick start guide. We're already on the website basically. Click on find a book. You can turn on or off communication symbols, which is activated through a green speech bubble in the upper left corner. And then there's various options within that. And then you start reading and making comments. So let's just go into the 
Tar Heel Shared Reader interface. So the first step, find a book. Now, what these little symbols, this shows you that there is shared reading comments on this book. And then this one also shows that it's been reviewed for educational quality. So let's say, for example, we want to find a book about dogs because that's what interests your son or daughter. Type in dogs and ooh, this looks cute. Dogs like to play. So we're going to click on this one. There's already symbols up at the bottom of the page. These are related to the core word vocabulary. There's 40 high frequency core words that have been determined through research. And there's this green comments button up here. I'm going to click on it because this gives you access to reading controls. So here for reading, this number varies from one through three. And this provides access to how many words are displayed in the comments that you're going to make. Although sometimes I've noticed even at the reading where there's one um, setting, there still might be two words that come up type thing. But you may be only modeling one symbol on the actual communication display. This side portion here lets you determine where you want the communication symbols. You can have them at the left, top, right, bottom, or you might not even want them displayed at all. So the instance when you might not want the symbols displayed at all is when your son or daughter already has a communication device with a language system on it and they have access to these core words. You are not going to model them here on the computer, but you're going to model them actually on their communication device so that they know where those are found. So that is where you would use the word none or the option of none. So the word size controls the actual size of the symbols. So I can go to the very large. And you can also display here the number of core words per page. So right now I've got it set to four, but you could have nine, or you could have 12. It just depends, they get smaller and smaller, but then you don't have to scroll through as much. So in this words section, you can uncheck which words you don't want displayed, but I highly encourage against not doing that. I think it's really important that individuals with Rett syndrome see all the words. And when you're modeling, if you're using the communication display that's embedded within the shared Tar Heel reader, then I would definitely keep them all there because then they can learn where those are found. Also, you're not limited in terms of what the comments are that you can make within a certain book. So I'm going to click done to close this. Now I'm gonna show you how this works. And I'm going to refer you to a video to watch about the car strategy. There's nothing usually on the title page, but if I go to the next page, so you would read, dogs like to play. And then here, over here in the comment section, it tells you, you can model the word up. So I can navigate to the word up. up. Go to the next page. And look here, there's the word like. So dogs like to play with toys. And I can model the word like. There's a video on modeling the strategy that you use with this. And it talks about waiting. And it tells you what to do with the car shared reading intervention. So I'm going to navigate out of this book. And back to the Tar Heel Shared Reader website. And it's under professional development. If you scroll down and click on module two, follow the car, then it talks about follow the car module. It gives you information about it. And then you can actually go into the video on this. And the video is short. It's seven minutes at the most. And so it's weird. I've been having troubles getting this up. So I'm going to click on click here to open the video in a new window. And then it seems to come up. So you can listen to the video. You can go back to follow the car. And then the other one that I don't recommend doing right away, but as you get really comfortable with the follow the car module, you can go to scroll down.
you can listen to the responding and adding more, module five. And then also, here's the one on putting the crowd in the car. So of course you can listen to more than this, but I'm just trying to be respectful of your time. If you are just at the beginning stages of communication with your son or daughter with Rett syndrome, then I want to show you how you can access a communication system that was actually showed in the shared reading and was available on screen in the Tar Heel shared reader. But this is actually a PDF that you can download and it's called Four Inline Universal Core Partner Assisted Communication Book. And it's from the Center for Literacy and Disability Studies. And so you can go to the website project-core.com for inline. And basically you can download and print an Adobe version of a flip book essentially that has core words in it with four on each page. And it will give you instructions of how to set it up. But this is something that's free and available so you can get started right away modeling and using it with the Tar Heel Shared Reader. And then you can use it also as the communication system that you get started with using with your son or daughter. I want to conclude this recorded webinar with a video of Nina and her family. This video of Nina and her family supports the essence of this recorded webinar by focusing on spending time with loved ones and creating memories through communication and conversation. Stay well. Stay safe and focus on the precious moments with your family. She do sometimes. Sometimes on the Toby, she says, I want to watch cartoons sometimes. She, she does. Cheeky. <laughs> she is cheeky, you're right. Nina, are you cheeky? I like my stuffed toys. You like your stuffed toys, but which one? Which one you like? Mm. Oh, you like Meadow? Mm. Or you like your fish chanchek? Stuff toys are yeah, back there. Parnesi catch and stuff toys, Parnesi. Did they go get your stuff toys, Nina? I like my stuff toys. Yeah, I do your stuff toys. Good boy. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Leon. Here are your stuff toys. Oh, you know what, Len? We have to move it not in the middle because she won't be able to read the screen. And one guy here. That's what they can do. <laughs> she just smiled at you, Leon. I like watching her, sorry, guys. I know, cheeky, cheeky. We know that. Do you like music? Mama, this is like Corona by... Mama, this is by the way Corona. That does look like a Corona virus. <laughs> yeah, it is Corona, right? No, it's just a ball with spikes. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying it's Corona. Don't you speed? Don't you speed? Hey, Cheeky Monkey, what else, Nini? Okay, Katie, take a little shot. If you like stuffed animals, we brought you stuffed animals. Kaisi ti ukset. I like my stuffed toys. Yes, stuffed toys. Here she they told are. you like three times. Here they are, stuffed toys. Yes. <laughs> stuffed toys. Here they are. Here they are. Your stuffed I toys. Love food. Yes. Food. You do love Nina, food. you had the <laughs> biggest dinner today. You had pasta with tomato sauce, and I think it's your favorite. Anymore. I like food. Which Mom, food you like, Nina? Maybe we make why a does it page with the food. Anymore? We should. Huh? Yeah, that battery ran out on that bird. Maybe we should do a page with food what Nina eats. Eh? I eat cereals for breakfast. 